Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be ranking every coaster at Hershey Park. I did this exact list over three years ago, but that list is a bit outdated as it doesn't feature Candemonium or Wildcat's Revenge, and overall the editing's a bit questionable. And yeah, that's about it. All this footage in the video is all from the Hershey Park official channel, which I'll be linking in the description. And yeah, let's get into it. Coming in in last place on this list, unsurprisingly, is Coco Cruiser. Coco Cruiser is just a regular Zamperla kitty coaster with just the single helix. It's a very common model of ride, and I haven't been on this ride in years. But if it's anything like I remember, it is just average. Not too rough, but it's a, it's a kitty coaster. I'm done analyzing it. Coming in at number 13 on the list is Trailblazer. Trailblazer is just an average era mine train coaster that doesn't have anything too significant about it. It's not offensively bad or anything, it's just sort of a whatever mine train that has a few problems. Like, it's a bit shaky and it's really short. There's only like two parts of the ride. There's one turn and then another turn and then a helix. I like how it's built into the terrain and the final helix is decently fun. But the only real notable thing about this ride is that this was my Roller Coaster Geeks first ever roller coaster, so um, they might as well put an ace landmark there or something. Overall, it's passable enough, but by mine train standards, it's like the best coaster ever made. Most mine trains are garbage. I've been pretty negative towards Jolly Rancher Remix as a concept in the past. I didn't like it when it was first announced, then I didn't like it when I wrote it, then I didn't like it when I wrote it again. But, I mean, at its core, it's still just a Vacoma boomerang. I think re-theming Sidewinder for no apparent reason really was not helpful at all. And this ride never gets any weights because at its core, it's still just the same bad ride as it always was. It's not the worst boomerang, it has the better vest restraints and there's some decent theming but like who cares it's a vacoma boomerang with a nice coat of paint figuratively though because the actual coat of paint of this ride is pretty bad like it's uncomfortable it jerks you around it's a vacoma boomerang i don't see why they don't just remove this thing even though they did just update it Jeez, these coasters at the bottom of the list are really not giving me anything to talk about wild mouse at hershey park is a wild mouse. On top of that, it's also the smaller mock model, so it doesn't even have like the cool drop at the beginning. It's just a bunch of switchbacks that just kind of slam you against the seat, and then a bunch of okay airtime hills. If you've ridden a normal wild mouse, you've ridden them all. But hey, at least it's not wild mouse at Dorney Park. That ride is legitimately one of the worst coasters I've been on, and it's a wild mouse. I don't know how they screwed that up that badly. As for Hershey's Wild Mouse, I swear the future entries on this list are going to get more interesting. J just wait a few more spots. Okay, well, here's a ride I actually kind of have opinions on. Yay, Comet is at number 10. Back when I was younger, this was easily the smoothest of the three wooden coasters that they had open, and it wasn't even really close. As of recent though, I had a few really bad rides on Comet that was just as rough as Lightning Racer, and I just wasn't enjoying it at all. Thankfully though, I did have a ride a few weeks ago that was much better for out of nowhere, I don't know what was going on, it wasn't rainy and it wasn't late in the day, so... I'm not sure, but I had one ride on this that was much better that keeps it in this number 10 spot. The ride itself is just an okay enough old PTC Woody, which I've heard get overrated quite a lot with people saying it's almost as good as Phoenix, and I just question if those people have ever been on Phoenix. I get why people like this ride a lot more than I do, but I just find it just kind of boring and average. It doesn't really give much airtime, doesn't give any forces, but it just has a nice older wooden coaster charm that... Is decent enough, but won't get it any higher than this. 
Now I'm just gonna sit and wait for all the Comet fans who are gonna suddenly show up and comment how it's the best ride ever, and I don't know. I, I don't hate this ride, it's pretty decent, but I just think it's a bit overrated. At number 9, I have Super Duper Looper. I'm probably pretty alone in the opinion that Super Duper Looper is a better ride than Comet, but I don't know, I've just always enjoyed it more. Except for that Hershey ranking video I made like 3 years ago, but that, that, did, that doesn't count. The ride's layout itself is very basic, it's just a turn after the lift into a 75 foot drop and a pretty solid, very circular old Schwarzkopf vertical loop. It was the first ever vertical loop on the east coast or something like that, but then the rest of the layout is just, it's like a big turn, a tunnel, and then a helix, and that's pretty much it. The second half of the ride is like equivalent to Trailblazer. But the first vertical loop is really good and definitely pulls a lot of positive G's. But overall, the ride is just fun. It doesn't really feel like it's aged at all. And, I don't know, Schwarzkopf's are just really good. Uh, number 8, we have Laugh Track. Laugh Track is a ride I tend to forget is even at Hershey Park to begin with, just due to the very few times I ride it per season. The capacity on this ride is terrible, so I would unironically recommend rope dropping this ride because it just gets consistently the longest rates. But that's pretty much irrelevant, onto the actual ride. It's just a cloned Mauer spinning coaster with some pretty neat theming. This might as well not even be a spinning coaster though because it barely spins at all. The ride is essentially like Skull Mountain quality but with theming. And I'll say, the blacklight aesthetic is really cool, and I especially like the Halloween redo they do of this ride when they just turn all the lights off, and the Christmas one where they put all the Christmas decorations in. But overall, Laugh Track is just an okay spinning coaster. I feel like I've been using the phrases okay and average to describe pretty much every ride on this list so far. Lightning Racer is a ride, I don't really have a great gauge on what the public opinion on it is, but it's definitely been losing me over like the past like five-ish years. I would used to say it was about Great Baron quality, but now I definitely feel like it's fallen due to uh, it getting much rougher and just there being clearly less maintenance put into this ride. It's been a bit better recently, and it never was as bad as Wildcat was, but for the ride itself, it's pretty alright. The ride is mostly focused on turns and transitions rather than airtime, which isn't the greatest, but it works excellently for a dueling coaster like this. The best part about Lightning Racer is easily that it is a racer, and a really good one at that. Unlike something like Racer at Kings Island or that type of PTC, um, it actually has a lot of cool interactive elements between the two cars, and unlike Twisted Colossus, it actually functions. And another thing is, this ride absolutely never has a line. So if for some reason you want to marathon this thing to win or something, go ahead. Overall, I've been on this ride like four times this season, and I've yet to win a match. Like, seriously. Did this thing's rig? They rig Lightning Racer. They, they rig it, I swear. There's no way. It's stupid. Anyways, this should have been RMC to not Wildcat. Unlike most rides at Hershey, I've actually grown to like Great Bear the more I ride it. I've gotten some really good rides on it recently, and I think it's overall in the middle tier of most BM inverts. The ride isn't really rough at all. It's pretty it's decently tall and decently fast. It's got a nice scenic view over the water. It's just I wish this ride were a bit longer. The layout of this ride is just the lift hill, a helix before the drop, which is admittedly a pretty cool feature that only this ride has. Then a vertical loop, Immelman, like some straight track, and then a zero G roll and a corkscrew, and then some turns at the end. There's pretty much no element on this ride that's worth noting outside of the first helix and the inversions, and the inversions just come one after another in the middle of the ride. Like, I very much enjoy everything on this ride, especially like the corkscrew and first drop. It's just, there's, it's just a bit too short, and that's why I have it slightly under the next one on this list. 
Uh, number five, we have Fahrenheit. And unlike Great Bear, Fahrenheit's a ride that's lost me more and more over the years. Just because I've gotten a lot of inconsistent rides on this. Sometimes it runs great, but then sometimes it feels like it's dragging, and I've had some really rough rides on it. But, as for the ride itself, it's one of the most unique rides I've ever seen. At one point, this was the steepest coaster on Earth with a 97 degree drop, and the layout is very similar to that of a Gerslauer Eurofighter, but it's made by Intamin. The ride is very inversion focused, with the inversions de definitely varying in quality, like the Cobra Roll isn't very fun, but then the Norwegian Loop and the Double Corkscrew are both really cool. There's a shockingly good ejector airtime hill at the end, but overall, the ride is just a bit too inconsistent, and I'm not the biggest fan of Eurofighters just in general for me to put it any higher than this. Like, I used to think this was better than Storm Hunter. What was I thinking? Speaking of Storm Hunter, coming in at number 4 is Storm Runner. Storm Runner is just a fun, intimate accelerator coaster with a very solid launch, a top hat that sometimes gives airtime, a Cobra Loop, which is kind of like an Immelman, followed by a Heartline Roll into a flying snake dive, this coaster has some weird elements, and then some turns in the end. Obviously, the biggest issue with this ride is its really short length, like it's less than a minute, and while all the elements are fun, especially the launch and the flying snake dive of all things, the ride just is way too short. But obviously that doesn't mean it's bad, like I really like Top Thrill Dragster, and I think Accelerator is also better than this ride, but um, yeah, overall it's a pretty solid ride. It also runs a little rough sometimes, but it's not too bad. I definitely debated a bit between Storm Runner and Candemonium of, of which was better, but I decided to put Candemonium ahead just for being a bit more of a complete experience. Out of the B&M hypers I've been on, Candemonium is definitely about in the middle of all of them. Like, it's nowhere near as good as something like Nitro, but it's leagues above Diamondback. The ride itself is decently short for a B&M hyper, it's just decently tall hill of camelback, turnaround, camelback, then an upwards helix into like a sideways airtime hill thing, and then a helix, and then the brakes. However, this thing gives some pretty great floater, especially at night when it's running really fast, and obviously being newer, it runs really well and has no B&M rattle at all. The sideways airtime hill thing after the helix is a bit underwhelming. I definitely expect that to be a bit stronger. But the two camelbacks and even the hill up into the brakes are both really strong. My biggest issue with this ride though is the trims kill it a little bit. Like, it's not awful, but just generally trims never make a ride better. Still, it's a B&M hyper. The ending's nice and scenic. It's pr pretty much, from what I've heard, Mako but worse. This is the first time since I first rode Skyrush that it has not been my number one coaster at the park, but Skyrush comes in at number two. Skyrush is another very unique intimate at this park, of which it has three for some reason, but it's, again, very solid. The first drop on the ride is maybe my favorite drop on any coaster, definitely like top three. The two airtime hills give some crazy ejector, the one at the very end I think held the record for the most negative G's, and you can feel that. And then the Stangled Dive thingy is also really fun too, but obviously, there is one th bad thing about this coaster, and it's where the Thigh Crush nickname comes from. The restraints on this ride are awful. If they get, like, new seats or new trains or something on this ride, this could go back up to being number one. But every time you finish this ride, just you are as stapled as you can possibly be. Still, some of the laterals in this ride are crazy. The first drop is amazing. It has great airtime. It's a great ride, but with just horrible restraints. Call it recency bias, but Wildcat's Revenge is my number one at the park, no question. Even a mid-tier RMC blows 95% of roller coasters out of the water. There's no bad parts of the ride. Honestly, the beginning might be the worst part. The first drop in the underflip, which was heavily advertised for some completely unknown reason to me, um, are probably the weakest parts of the ride, but the rest of the ride just hauls through the very good layout. This ride has some really great elements, like the first ejector hill after the um, underflip, and the double up or double down, I'm not really sure what direction that hill's doubling. The three zero G rolls, especially the one right under the structure, are all great. One of them almost is a zero G stall, not really sure why it isn't, but it's 
pretty much a zero G stall, and I love those. I mean, as I just said, a mid mid tier RMC blows everything else out of the water. But unfortunately, the ride's name is Wildcat's Revenge, which means it sucks because oh my god, how do you possibly make a name that bad? This is ridiculous. The twenty thousandth time I've talked about this, I'm sick. This is so dumb. I hate. Anyways, this is the best ride in the park. And thank you so much for watching. Um, Hershey Park is definitely a park I have very mixed feelings on, but their coaster lineup is undeniably amazing. And it was really hard choosing because their top six especially is all really good. But that's too much praising Hershey for me. So um, I'm just going to end it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for 150 subscribers. Thank you for all the support on my last video. It's been my best performing start to any video. So uh, yeah, if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe to the channel.